If you're watching this, I take it that you are now well versed with the concept of debit and credit. You know about the three types of accounts, personal, real and nominal. And you also know the rules of debit and credit for these three types of accounts. In this video, we are going to go to the next step, which is the first step in the accounting cycle. If you remember this slide, we discussed that a transaction has to, go, uh, has to go through a cycle, a set of books. The first book of accounting is called a journal and any transaction as it take place, takes place in the business is recorded in this first book called journal. Therefore, if you look at a journal of a business, you would see transactions in the chronological order. In this video, we are going to look at the format uh, which is used for this book, the process which is used to write the transactions in this book, the process which is called journalizing. And finally, we look at the output. How does a journal uh, look like after you have recorded the transactions? So let us get started. Here's a typical format of a journal wherein you have four columns. You mention the date of the transaction. For example, a transaction can take place on April 1st, 2020. And then you write an entry here, which we call as a journal entry. And then you write an amount, let's say here, and an amount in the credit uh, column. And we know that uh, you know there are two sides to any transactions, a debit side and a credit side. We write the amount, uh, which is you know debit amount in this column, and we write the credit amount in the other column. Uh, there can be another you know column in this uh, uh, journal, which can be you know a reference uh, or a you know ledger folio uh, number, which is again you know, something which accountants should bother about, but. Uh, you know, as, as a manager, as somebody who wants to be able to read the financial statements, we do not necessarily uh, need to get into those nitty gritties. We need to understand the flow, the process uh, and the principles around it rather than, you know, minute details, uh, you know, of the recording the transactions. So this is the format of journal. Now let us look at uh, a list of transactions. I have about 14 transactions uh, on the screen. Uh, and these transactions kind of simulate uh, different kinds of transactions which would happen in a business. Sample transactions and we are going to take each transaction one by one and try to write a journal entry. Let's take transaction one. So we're going to follow four steps in order to arrive at the journal entry. And as I explained, journal entry is what you write in the book called journal. So there is a way to write this entry uh, and that's what, what we're going to learn uh, now. So transaction one says shareholders invest uh, INR 100 as capital into the business. So business let's say started and you know uh, investment is coming in, shareholders are putting in money. Step one, the first step uh, is to identify the accounts involved. What are the two accounts involved? One learning uh, you know, that you should have now is that there are at least there are, there are at least two accounts which are involved in any transaction. So we need to identify what are the accounts that are involved in this uh, transaction. So how do we do it? So we look at the uh, transaction it says shareholder so shareholders shareholders account is you know one possible account then there is you know investment <coughs> so investment account is another possibility there is capital so capital account is another possibility and this money is coming in so the money is going to go to uh, say bank account or it could come in cash as well. So, you know, uh, in my experience, these are different uh, kinds of accounts which students come up with uh, that possibly, you know, this is what is involved. 
Now I'm going to run through these and try to tell you which are the two accounts uh, which you should consider writing this transaction in. Number one, uh, let us decide whether this money is coming into the bank account or cash account. And I'm going to make a blanket rule here. Uh, we're going to say uh, transactions are happening through bank. All transactions happen through bank because you know now we are in digital age. So mostly bank uh, or check that is the mode of transaction. So we're going to ignore cash for the purpose of this exercise. It is possible transactions are in cash. But for simplicity, we'll assume bank account. Now shareholders deposit money in the bank account uh, of the company. So certainly bank account is involved. So I'm going to pick this account as one. So I now just need to identify one more account. And I said there are at least two accounts involved, but there can be three, four, five as well. But in these transactions, simple transactions, uh, there are two accounts involved. Then the other options were shareholders account investment account and capital account and from our experience from you know from the discussion that we've had till now in various videos uh, we we've seen that you know capital is one account which certainly is shown in the balance sheet uh, we've gone through the uh, balance sheet of reliance industries limited as well we've seen capital account and not only capital it is called shareholders capital account shareholders capital account they also call it equity and so on but uh, shareholders capital account can be clubbed since uh, shareholders transaction with the business is only going to be of this nature. They invest money, they get a return. So I'm going to cancel this and combine these two to say shareholders capital account. Now this the last option which is left is uh, investment account. Now this term investment account, let me just write it here. This is reserved for the investments made by the business. So instead of shareholders, uh, you know, money coming into business other than calling that as an investment, when business invests in outside opportunities, we should call that as investment. The, again, I'm invoking the entity principle, the business, the company should decide from company's point of view, this money is capital. It is investment from the point of view of the shareholder. Shareholder is investing his money in the business, but business is receiving cash in the bank account against the capital, uh, the shareholder's capital, uh, you know, that's the liability which is getting created. Therefore, investment is not uh, an account which is involved here. So we've arrived at two accounts bank account and shareholders capital account shareholders capital account so step one is done step two is to identify the nature of the account and by nature i mean you have to identify uh, whether these accounts are personal real or nominal account now we're going to use these uh, understandings from the previous videos. Bank account, as we know, is an asset, is a current asset, and all assets are real account. Shareholders capital, on the other hand, is a liability, and all liabilities, as we understand, are personal account. There you go. So we're done with step two as well. Let us now go to step three. Step three says, what is the rule of debit and credit for the accounts involved? Well, the two accounts involved are real and personal. So for real account, the rule is debit what comes in and credit what goes out, what goes out. And the other account involved is personal account the rule for that is debit the receiver and credit the giver. Step three, done. Step four is to now write the journal entry. How do we write the journal entry? We are going to write about the claims of business going up or down as a result of this transaction. 
Therefore, as a result of this transaction, asset uh, uh, bank and shareholder capital are the two accounts which are getting affected. One of these accounts is going to be debited, the other one is going to be credited. We look at these one by one. So bank account, first of all, I write bank account. Bank account is a real account and debit what comes in. Bank is you know coming in in the way that you have more balance coming into the bank account. Therefore, this rule applies. Debit what comes in. Bank balance is coming in, so I'm going to write bank account debit. On the other hand, I have a personal account in which the rule is debit the receiver and credit the giver. Now, shareholders capital is the other account. It is a representative personal account. The account represents the shareholders. Shareholders are the givers of capital in this case. So you credit the giver. So I'm going to write shareholders account. Shareholders capital account credit and the amount is 100 we're going to write 100 here and 100 here opposite to debit opposite to credit you don't have to draw the arrows but i'm just trying to indicate there you go that is a journal entry we are entering this transaction in a specific language of accounting using some scientific methods scientific tools uh, or the rules that we learned uh, uh, recently and this is the outcome so rather than writing in plain English, which says shareholders invest money in the business, we, we say bank account debit and shareholders capital account credit. It means the, uh, the business's claims on bank are going up because money is coming into the bank account and shareholders claims on the business are going up as well because it says credit. Credit means businesses claims are going down which means somebody else's claim on the business is going up. That someone is shareholder. So that is how you journalize the transactions in the book or the first book of accounting, which is called journal. Let me stop here. I'll continue the rest of the transactions in the next video.